Hey guys, it's Glenn from glenscarcollection.com and in this video I'm going to reveal my new daily driver. This is not it. This is my 2005 uh, Acura NSX which you'll be familiar with if you watch the channel. Let's go with the light here. And uh, I just filmed the reveal of my new car but I needed an intro. So explain how we got there because I kind of said in the, the last couple of videos what I narrowed the new daily driver down to and I didn't buy any of those. So we'll go over the cars real quick, give you like a five minute intro how I wound up on this car and then you'll you'll see the new car. I'm a BMW guy, I've had nine M cars. I was considering the new M3, a CPO M5, an E63 AMG and probably a dark horse would be an RS5. So first with the M3, I just, I think I missed the boat on it. Uh, this slow car, we're never gonna get around this slow Jeep. BMW Tenafly sells them at sticker. I get all my BMWs there and they told me put in an order because I had an M340i xDrive lease coming up in May and they said you know put an order in a year in advance six months in advance this way you'll have a car because I'm a commercial real estate broker and I'm on commission I still have commissions backlogged because of supply chain issues and COVID I still have deals like from 2020 and 2021 then I haven't gotten the final uh, commission check yet because you get paid over a period of years you do a 10-year lease your commission is paid out in two or three years so I don't want to commit to anything until I know I have the money in my bank account. So I should have listened to BMW Tenafly, ordered an M3, and if I wasn't ready to take it, I could always order another one, right? I'm sure they would have sold it a second since they sell cars in MSRP. So anyway, timing didn't work for the M3. I'm a little concerned if the LCI update next year gets rid of those grills. So then I was thinking, I'll get a CPO M5, 2018, 2019, 600 horsepower for the regular M5, 617 horsepower for the competition M5. Keep that a couple years. Prices will drop because M3s, most dealers are still selling them for about 5,000 over sticker. Used ones with miles are selling almost for full M MSRP. That'll probably end now that interest rates are high, probably a year from now. In the winter, I think you'll see a big drop. So the last thing I want to do is buy a used M3 with 20,000 miles on it for 85. And then, uh, you know, in the winter, it's worth 75 or 70. So I think there'll be a drop at some point, probably next year or if we have a harsh winter. So I was thinking 2018, 2019 M5, keep it for a year or two. Then I can get the new M3 with an LCI update. E63S, for a while, if you asked me a year ago, I would have told you that was the car I was getting. I just thought that car was so visceral. It sounds amazing. Couldn't find one in a color I like. They're all like gray or black, you know, if I, or white. If I could find like a cardinal red or a brilliant blue, that, who knows, that may have been the choice. Transmission isn't as good as the other ones. That's probably the biggest letdown, and the handling is not that great. RS5, good choice. They've come down, and I'm talking about the hatchback, I mean the four-door. The, the headroom isn't there. I'm six feet tall, and I cannot sit behind myself. I think the M5s are good buys in that $70,000 price range for a CPO. They were 120, 130, 140 new. So I go to a dealer. I had to go to Atlantic City for work probably a month ago and uh, not to buy because I was trying to buy one from BMW Tenafly because they could CPO M5s and I found an, another dealer that had an M5 and I test drove it and uh, 600 horsepower is very fast so I drove it and it was great and then they had this other car there and I said you know what before I commit to an M5 and I don't think it was going to be that one I was trying to wait for a Marina Bay Blue one to show up. I test drove that M5 and they had one other car there and I said, oh, you know, I never really thought of that car before and I've driven it and I've liked it. Let me try that one time just to compare it back to back with an M5. These cars weigh the same and I drove them back to back on the same roads, which were highway and tight roads, and I couldn't believe the difference in handling. So I drove these cars back to back and this wasn't the highest horsepower of the other car, so I didn't buy it there, but I knew I wanted the chassis of that other car. Now it's just up to finding the 500 horsepower version. So my criteria essentially became 500 horsepower four doors all wheel drive. So when I drove this other car, it weighed exactly the same as the M5. You can look it up, about a 20 to 30 pound difference. And this car found a thousand pounds lighter than the M5. And I said, okay, I guess I'm buying this car. And then of course I couldn't just buy the base version. I was buying used CPO and they give you uh, a longer CPO, this other company. Found one in, at one of the main dealers and uh, even paid for a third year of CPO. The first two years are free. So now I have three years unlimited mileage. This car is just as fast as the M5. 
and out handles it, even though they weigh the same. So here it is, my new car. I hope you like it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe because we'll do a lot of videos on this car. And let me know what you think in the comments of my new daily driver. Here she is, a Porsche Panamera. And just not any Panamera, a Panamera Turbo. So we got a twin turbo V8. And let me tell you, the V8 is a huge improvement over the V6 Panameras, even the 4S. GTS, as I mentioned, is a detuned V8 twin turbo turbo engine, because turbo is now just a trim lot, since they're all turbos. So 550 horsepower. I put about, uh, it's been hard for me to film a video, I've been busy with work, so I put about a thousand miles on this car already, so probably one of the next videos I'll do a thousand mile review when we'll get into the nitty gritty. This car had an original sticker price of 208,000. I believe base price is about 148, 149. So this car has a good $60,000 in options and it all goes to performance options. No, uh, you know, leather vents in this car, all performance. So the one thing that should stand out to you just by looking at it is the ceramic brake. So I believe these are 10 piston calipers, which I think are the same or similar that you find in the Lamborghini Urus. So hopefully they never need replacement. Now this is a CPO car, so the car has to have at least 75% of its pads left or greater. It's also got newer tires. Now they're all seasoned, so they should be interesting. Last winter was mild, so I'm sure we'll get killed next year in winter. Uh, this is a two year why I picked, well a lot of reasons why I picked this car. Uh, performance options, we'll go into all those options. It's got rear steer, it's got the Porsche dynamic chassis control. I definitely had a compromise on color to get the options that I wanted. Uh, there were some really cool options here that I'll do in the next video when I have more time. So this is Volcano Gray. Now I just washed it. It gets dirty pretty easily like black and in low light or at nighttime it actually looks black. So during the day in the sun you can see the gray. It's metallic. It's uh, it's beautiful. It's growing on me because it has the black wheels. GTSs typically have the black wheels. This had painted black wheels as an option. So this is my new real estate car. This car has to pay for all my other cars. And what that means is that this has to take me all around the state of New Jersey and probably lower New York State, Pennsylvania, to do real estate deals to get commissions to sell all the, uh, to afford all the cars. You should see my insurance bill. And yes, we still have the Miami Blue 911. Would never sell that to me. You should get a Cayman Boxster 911 first and then consider, you know, as your family car, a Panamera, a Cayenne, a Macan. I really love the Macan and that's kind of what made me consider the Panamera again. I've done a DCH Acura. I did a GTS last year and it was fun. It probably wasn't as fast enough for me. This turbo with the 550 horsepower is 3.6 seconds to 60, 3.4 seconds to 60 with Sport Chrono like this has because Sport Chrono gives you launch control. This has optional 21 inch wheels, 20s are standard, steel brakes are standard, which would have been fine. Uh, this just happened to come with the ceramic. So, so far so good. Let's see how they handle the cold of a New Jersey winter. Bought this out in Pennsylvania, over 100 miles away from my uh, house. Different dealer this time, Porsche, the main line. Supposedly the original owner of this car uh, plays for the Philadelphia Flyers, so they can't tell me who it is. If anybody is a Flyers fan and knows that, please let me know. I'd be curious who it is. Uh, but so far, it's been great. I'll do an in-depth video, but this has everything. It has, you know, massage seats, even massage seats in the back, which is crazy. It's the only car I've seen that has that. It has the Burmeister. I tested a, a 4S, a GTS, before I found this turbo. And once you hear the Burmeister system, it's got 23 speakers, I believe 1,500 watts. You, you would definitely not want Bose. Now, if you look... This is a 2017, so it's the same exact steering wheel as my 2017 Carrera. So it's very easy. And what's great about this car, and I'll do a POV uh, driving review, is I can actually get this lower seat lower than my manual seats in the 911. So you can make this a ride height, like where you think you're driving a smaller SUV, or you could make it a ride height where you're driving a 911 Boxster or Cayman, which I think is, is pretty darn cool. Now it's actually, this is probably, this is not the biggest car I've owned for my real estate business. The Audi S8 was about 202 inches. I believe this is 198. So it is about 10, 11 inches longer than my M340i xDrive, which I just had and then I loved. It's about two inches longer than an M5. So 
with the rear steer though it feels much like a much smaller car when you park it I have a tight parking garage at work or I park in my driveway or park it at the gym you feel the width and the length of the car luckily this has the optional 360 cameras so far it's been great and I'll do a full re video review of come uh, to come when we're driving this and we'll also dissect the options see what, what are worth and what aren't so this car I got for a steal compared to its original price 208,000 now I don't know maybe the original owner got a discount off that 208,000 they probably did and I'll go over the 60,000 options which are worth it which are not in a perfect world this would be sapphire blue or probably carmine red I think is my favorite color for the Panamera but this kind of gives it a stealth look which is pretty cool so now if I look at it here it kind of looks black right if I go more in the sunlight then you see the volcano gray so the color really pops and anything that has black wheels to me looks cool so let me know what you think of the comments on my new daily driver we'll go over how many miles are on the car the options driving videos to come so make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know how did I do let me know in the comments below and if you like Porsches make sure to hit the like button thanks again for watching guys and I will see you next time